Module number 2, Atoms Inside Out Atoms are the basic unit of matter. They are too small to see with our naked eye, or even with the use of an ordinary compound microscope. In this module, we will study further about the atoms. We are going to name the scientists that contributed to the discovery of atom, and we are going to identify the three components of the atom. So join me as we turn the atoms inside out. Module 2 is based on DEPED's most essential learning competency. Determine the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons in a particular atom. At the end of Module 2, you should be able to answer the following key questions. What makes up an atom? How do these components differ from each other? How are these components arranged inside the atom? Vocabulary for this module we have Electron They are the negatively charged subatomic particle Proton They are the positively charged subatomic particle And neutrons has no electrical charge you will learn more about these terms as we go along with our lesson. Atoms are the building blocks of matter that make up everything that we encounter every day. From your ball pen and its ink, the page on your book, and even your body is composed of atoms because you are considered as a matter. If you want to create a language, you'll need an alphabet. If you want to build a house, you'll need hollow blocks. Now if you want to build molecules, you will need atoms of different elements. Like for example, water molecule is composed of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. Elements are the alphabet in the language of molecules. Each element is a little bit different from the rest. From the time the word science was introduced, many people gained interest with the things around them and became fond of asking questions about their surroundings. Up to this time, scientists never stopped investigating things. The history of the study of the atomic nature of matter illustrates the thinking process that goes on in the philosophers' and scientists' heads. Some early Greek philosophers have played pivotal roles concerning the atomic structure. The timeline that follows summarizes the history of how the atom was studied during the ancient times up to the modern times. Between 384 to 322 BC, Aristotle proposed that all substances are composed of four elements, air, earth, fire, and water in different proportion. Around 500 BC, Democritus proposed that everything is composed of very small bit of matter that is indivisible and called it atom from the Greek word atomus, which means indivisible. Then in 1803, John Dalton gathered all the findings made by the ancient philosophers and results of various experiments. He came up with the atomic theory. His model of the atom is also known as the billiard ball model. Then in 1898, J.J. Thomson discovered the electrons using cathode ray tube experiment and he developed the plum pudding model. Thomson proposed that the negatively charged electrons were embedded in a kind of cloud or soup of positive charge as shown in the figure. In 1909 to 1911, Ernest Rutherford discovered the proton and that an atom has a massive center core called nucleus through his alpha scattering experiment or the gold foil experiment. He developed the nuclear atomic model of the atom. 
Then in 1913, Niels Bohr concluded from his studies and experiment that the electrons are moving on its orbits with specific energies around the nucleus called energy level. He developed the planetary atomic model. In 1923, Louis de Broglie discovered that electrons had a dual nature similar to both partic particles and waves. He called it the particle-wave duality. Then in 1925, Werner Heisenberg said that it is not possible to identify the exact location of the electrons in an energy level. The following year, 1926, Erwin Schrödinger explained movement of an electron in an atom as wave and formulated a wave equation to determine the probable location of electrons in an orbit. The model of the atom is called the electron cloud model. Again in 1926, James Chadwick measured the energy of protons emerging from the hydrogen atoms. He also discovered the subatomic particle neutron. I want you to watch this video. Atoms make up all of the Earth's matter. Atoms can be broken down into three basic components. Positively charged protons, negatively charged electrons, and neutrally charged neutrons. The number of these components and their arrangement determines the atom's elemental properties. Here we have a helium atom. Helium atoms consist of two protons, two neutrons, and two electrons. The nucleus at the center of the atom is made up of protons and neutrons. The nucleus is relatively small in relationship to the rest of the atom. In fact, if an atom were the size of a football stadium, the nucleus would only be as big as a pea. The remainder of the atom's volume is made up of shells with electrons orbiting around the nucleus. While the electrons orbiting the nucleus occupy a relatively vast amount of space and comprise most of an atom's volume, they have virtually zero mass. Protons and neutrons, on the other hand, although very small, contribute most of the mass of an atom. The atom is the smallest unit of matter that retains all of the chemical properties of an element. Now there are three subatomic particles in an atom. First we have the electrons. This is the negatively charged particle of the atom. Next, we have the protons. This is the positively charged particle. And the neutrons, which is electrically neutral. An atom has equal number of protons and electrons. This, this makes the atom neutral. The atom consists of two regions. The first is the tiny atomic nucleus, which is in the center of the atom and contains the protons and neutrons. They are collectively called nucleons. Protons and neutrons are relatively heavier than electrons. The mass of an atom is mainly determined by the mass of the nucleus. The second much larger region of the atom is a cloud of electrons that orbit around the nucleus. The attraction between the positively charged protons and negatively charged electrons holds the atom together. Most atoms contain all, th all three of these types of subatomic particles, the protons, the electrons, and neutrons. Hydrogen is an exception because it typically has one proton and one electron, but it has no neutrons. The number of protons in the nucleus determines which element an atom is, while the number of electrons surrounding the nucleus determines which kind of reactions the atom will undergo. 
Though we know today the atoms are composed of many other types of smaller particles, our study of chemistry will only require us to focus on these three subatomic particles. Let us study the three subatomic particles one by one. Let's start with the electron. Electrons are the subatomic particles surrounding the nucleus of an atom. It is outside the nucleus of an atom. An electron is negatively charged. It has a charge of negative 1. They are also light compared with the protons and neutrons. Two electrons repel each other. The number of electrons in an atom is equal to the number of protons. That is why atoms is electrically neutral. Next, we have the protons. Protons are present in the nucleus of an atom. Protons are positively charged. The mass of a proton is approximately 1,840 times the mass of an electron. And a proton of and an, and an electron have opposite charges and they attract each other. Next, we have the neutron. Neutrons are present in the nucleus of an atom. Neutrons are neutral. They have a net electrical charge of zero. The mass of a neutron is nearly equal to the mass of a proton. Neutron and proton are collectively called nucleons. Neutrons bind with protons with a nuclear force. The number of neutrons determine the isotope of an element. To get the number of neutrons, you need to subtract the mass number to protons. Now here are some properties of the three main subatomic particles, their charge, the mass, and their location. Atomic number is the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom and determines the identity of each element. The number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. This number is the same for all atoms of a particular element. Atoms of different elements have different number of protons. For example, we have here helium with atomic number 2, meaning it has two protons in its nucleus. Hydrogen has an atomic number 1, meaning it has only one proton in its nucleus, and so on with the other elements. The atomic number tends to be the most visible number and usually sits above the element symbol in the periodic table, while the atomic mass is usually found beneath the atomic symbol. While the number of protons is fixed for an atom of an element, the number of neutrons may vary. Atoms having the same number of protons but different number of neutrons are referred to as isotopes. The isotopes are identified through their mass number which is the sum of the number of protons and the number of neutrons in an atom. Example we have here is carbon. Its atomic number is 6. Hence, it has 6 protons and 6 neutrons. Its isotopes are carbon-12 which has 6 neutrons, carbon-13 which has 7 neutrons, and carbon-14 which has 8 neutrons. The atomic number is simply the number of protons which is equal to the number of electrons making the atom neutral. Together, the number of protons and the number of neutrons determine the element's mass number.
or mass number equals the sum of protons plus the neutrons. Now, if you want to calculate how many neutrons an atom has, you can simply subtract the number of protons or atomic number from the mass number. To recap, atom is the smallest unit of matter that retains all of the chemical properties of an element. There are three subatomic particles of an atom. We have the electrons, the negatively charged particle, the protons, which is the positively charged particle, and the neutrons, which is electrically neutral. Well, that's it. Thank you for listening. Up next, Module 3, Periodic Table of Elements.